Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, this video I'm so nervous about because it's an interesting topic to talk about. I don't think it's a good topic to get outraged about. I don't think it's a good topic to throw a fit over or try to cancel someone or all the rest. And I'm worried that it will do that. So I, I've been at a bit of a loss. I've kind of thought about some different ways to do it. I thought, well, I'll just not mention the person who wrote this, but that doesn't make sense because you can immediately find it out. Um, but I, I, I want to talk about this from the time period. And I'd like for everybody, if you can, please just put aside whatever kind of predisposed bias you have coming in about people being evil or people being good or the greater social fight just for a second. Let's all travel back to the year 1977 together and just kind of wipe your minds clean and let's just take this uh, take this for what it is. So Miss Marvel, number one, uh, starts in 1977 and it is a, Marvel was kind of pushing this a little bit like it was a, um, uh, a feminist comic book. Uh, it was, this is Carol Danvers. This is our current Captain Marvel. This is, um, while there was, uh, you know, Captain Marvel, Marvel was still running around, uh, pre Monica Rambeau, uh, Captain Marvel, uh, pre binary <laughs> Carol got to get so confusing all the time. I, I, I feel bad. Like the people coming into the Marvel universe right now and they, they saw the Captain Marvel movie and they're like, I'd like to get some comics and they read the current Captain Marvel comic. They're like, this doesn't seem to have the same action and excitement as the movie. Um, why is why all these storylines about cats? Uh, and, and then what are these alternate futures? What's going on? I'll go back. Wait a minute. Her costume has changed. Hold on. She's a black woman now. Wait, she's a guy. What is what is going on here? That had to be very confusing for people. Anyway, uh, Miss Marvel launches. It's the fabulous first issue. On the cover, we see the uh, featuring the most mysterious woman warrior since Madame Medusa. What? Okay. And if you think our leading lady is something, wait till you see her star-studded supporting cast, which includes uh, people like J. Jonah Jameson and Mary Jane. Uh, Peter Parker makes a, an appearance on the cover, but he is really not any kind of part of the of the series, although they leverage Spider-Man over and over. Um and this comic starts in 1977. It sets up Carol and a new status quo, which is uh, doing what she always wanted to do, which was be a writer, uh, which did not, that's not part of, I don't know, is that, do they reference that today? I, we, we hear a lot about her being in the Air Force and other things and space pilot, but uh, but I don't, we don't hear a lot about Captain Marvel's hidden dream to be a journalist, but, but okay, in this comic there was. And uh, Marvel wanted a uh, female-led feminist hero. Uh, Linda Carter was tearing it up with Wonder Woman on TV at the time. The uh, Charlie's Angels was there. Uh, the women's liberation movement was a big thing. So that's why they called it Miss, M-S, Ms. Marvel. Um, and the Ms. being a uh, pretty big deal. Sounds silly now, but, you know, the, that pronoun was, was, uh, was a big deal. That title, that pronoun. So the comic book uh, kicks off and it, it more or less sucks. What's interesting is that I think people, I, I hear a lot of people whenever we talk about Captain Marvel talking about we have to go back and these titles back in the 70s are great. But I'm convinced people didn't actually read these titles in the 70s because they are pretty awful. I mean, at, at different times, Carol is uh, like for a while she passes out and then turns into her other identity and it's it's super lame. Uh the, she fights villains that all kind of suck. There's grotesque and there, there's just a bunch of terrible, terrible villains here. Uh, the Super Scroll is probably as good as it gets. And that was in a, a Marvel team up book. Um, she fights uh, Modoc at one point, And then there's a super cringy, weird page where Modoc turns into a, a dude like with abs. And um, then she falls in love with him briefly. And wants to like the, the caption is, uh, you know, she'll serve him like he's her God. It's, it's just a it. And he still has the Modoc face on a it, it's weird. I'm just I'm just saying it's super, super strange. Um, so, I mean, this, this title is not great. I, I think people who say it's uh, it's great are are forgetting a little bit. You go back and you read those comics. Uh, I went back and read them and it's like, oh, this was not good. <laughs> this, this, this comic was not great. So. Um, yeah, the exact line when she's uh, falling in love with Modoc, she's kind of brainwashed and she falls in love with this uh, very creepy looking Modoc and she makes out with him on the page. And then it says, uh, 
It's made him a man Miss Marvel can love and serve. A woman she can she will worship as a god. It's it's like what? Um, but anyway, and this title also it had a very strange rotating cast of uh, boyfriends. Uh, she she dates her therapist uh, Mike Barrett, who then just gets super murdered, uh, which is also weird. She dates a guy named Sam Adams, which is uh, you know, and then she's an alcoholic later. Like I, I mean, I don't even know what to to make of all this. It's a mess. I guess is my point. Um, it, it was a mess. So his title is written by Jerry Conway. And um, this is the part where I, um, I, I here's the, the letter. So you're seeing it up on screen. Um, and in the first issue, Jerry Conway uh, wants to kind of tackle head on and, and good for him for doing this. The question of why a man is writing the book. Um, and, and he does it this way. And again, this is not an attempt to cancel Jerry Conway because I'm going to just say it before I read through this. Keep in mind, uh, Jerry Conway, I think, is 25 or 24, uh, somewhere, well, maybe a little later, 20, he's in, he's in his mid-20s, is the point. It is 1977. Um, the letter pages are goofy to nonsensical at different times. And this is what Jerry Conway writes. He writes, uh, which raises another thornier question, why is a man writing this book about a woman? Why didn't a woman create Miss Marvel? And to that question, there are really no simple answers. For one thing, for whatever reason, right or wrong, at the moment, there are no thoroughly trained and qualified women writers working in the superhero comics field. I, I, um, I don't. That, that's not entirely true, by the way. There were some uh, some women who are working in this field, but not many. That's that's that is an accurate statement. Um, that that doesn't mean. I mean, the the, the nuance to the sentence is. Um, uh, working in the superhero comics field. There were trained and qualified women out there working in fiction and other places, but they weren't in the uh, superhero comics field. Uh, we kind of bypass like, why was that uh, for a different point, which is, um, you know, by making that statement, I've alienated half a dozen talented women. Yeah, the six of them <laughs> that are out there. <laughs> this is one of those like, when you're in a hole, you stop digging kind of statements. But is it? it's, it's, it's weird because it's not, technically wrong and yet it's yeah i don't know it, it's a lot of things going on here and i know people in the comments are going to say like but but where was he wrong well he's just placing the wrongness in the wrong place if, the, if that makes any sense i stand by what i said okay good for you no women writers trained in superhero comics i mean the, the operative question is why aren't there uh why why weren't why weren't the superhero comic companies hiring women at the time who maybe wanted the job that's the the question but anyway there should be no denying it but there aren't that's reason number one Here's my favorite line, and this is this is by nature of I think about some of the things I said in my twenties, um, and you know that I would I would not say today. But reason number two is more personal. A man is writing this book because a man wants to write this book. <laughs> Me, <laughs> I, uh, it's, it's it's it was charming. I read this and I had a good laugh. Um, again, if if somebody wrote that today, a man that would be the end of their their career. Um, more reason than this I don't personally need. <laughs> <laughs> Again, what he's saying here is is not wrong. It's it's worded a little funny, which is why I'm laughing. Uh, it's the uh, you know yeah, a person writing this book should want to write the book. Absolutely, I I totally agree with that. And you don't you know if you, if you want to write the book, you got a good pitch, you have a way to do it, then you should. I think there's there's nothing wrong with that. It's just worded in a way that's pretty funny. Um, and then he goes into the last statement, which uh, is is the one again where I, I think. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those common sense things and it, yet not at the same time. Reason three, why not a man? If the women's liberation movement means anything, it's a battle for equality of the sexes. And it's my contention that a man properly motivated and aware of the pitfalls can write a woman character as well as a woman. There used to be a belief that women couldn't write convincing male adventure stories, but in many fields it's been proven completely untrue. I hold that the reverse is equally untrue, that men can't write convincing women. Well, and he's right, of course. Um, definitely... If you've got a good story and a good pitch, you can write a, a male character, a female character, a white character, black character, gay character, trans character, uh, Mexican character, alien character, wh whatever it happens to be. Um, you can, you know, if you've got a good pitch, good story, you can write those characters. It's it's kind of silly. I get the logic be behind we need to give more opportunities to people who are not white dudes to write comics. I get that. It, it kind of goes to that first point. Why aren't there more people trained in superhero comics? It's it's not trained. It's, op, you know, are those opportunities open for everybody? They should be. But it, it does need to be the opportunities are open for everyone, meaning it's an open door. 
And if you've got a good pitch, you can come through that door. And who you are is irrelevant. That should be the goal. It Sometimes it feels like to fix one problem, we introduce a different problem. So today, I think if you were to, um, you know, it like, like put it this way, if you're going to put a writer on Batwoman, could you put a male writer on Batwoman without a lot of outrage and anger? Probably not. Could you put a Asian man writing uh, Luke Cage? Could you put a uh, white woman writing Riri Williams? Could you? Like, could, you, could you? You should be able to. Is the pitch good? Is the story going to be good? Is the character going to be handled authentically? That's what matters. The question mark, and, and uh, again, a lot of people, and I'm sure some people in my comments are going to skip over this, is, is the door truly open for everyone? It should be. Um, again, un everyone should be underlined. Male, female, all races, all genders, all, 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 all that should be open. Um, you shouldn't be holding the door open for some and not others. It should just be who can come in and write a good story. And is there an opportunity for everyone to write a story? And if we're going to make sure that a you know latino person is getting an opportunity to write a comic let's make sure that we're opening the door to that opportunity without closing the door on somebody else for another opportunity i i that should be the goal um it feels like we're still a long way away from that goal but i found this letter just just funny uh, this moment in this miss marvel comic uh it, it's it's a fascinating moment in time and again i hope only a true dumbass would go out and try and cancel Jerry Conway for writing this. Hopefully nobody does that. That would be truly stupid. Um, it, it was, again, it's the seventies. He's writing from his heart. It's, it's again, he's, he's, you'd write it differently today, but it's the, the spirit of this, I think are not horrible, awful, internalized, terrible things. He's, he's, he's saying something that should be self-obvious. And I think the outcome of this should be yeah, everybody should have a chance to write something, and I'm writing this one, and that's my call. Shouldn't be a problem. Anyway, just interesting. It's an interesting time capsule of a thing. Marvel Comics 1977, Miss Marvel. How it all began, uh, here you go. So, I don't know, what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. It's a sticky subject. I get it. It absolutely is. Um, but, uh, you know, interesting to think about. Um, like and subscribe. Hey, thanks for listening.